So I'm thinking about several areas that you might want to advise from where you sit right now your, your great-great-grandchildren. And one of them is, and I, I'm making certain assumptions. I'm making one assumption I'm making is that, that we get it together together and that, that the elders do what we're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. and, um, and we straighten out the planet or straighten out our relationship to the planet and begin to restore it to wholeness. And that we, f we figure out how to, to make an economy in which people can prosper and at the same time everybody has. And, and that there's a, a shift in reality that's going on. And I'm, I'm making the assumption that that's going to happen within within, God bless you, Reb Zaman, within your lifetime. Amen. And, um, and so I'm thinking about what would you say to your great-grandchildren about family life, mm -hmm. about making marriage work, for example, whether it be marriage between man and a woman or, or a man and a man, a woman and a woman, or, you know, whatever. The first thing I would want to say, I'd like to learn myself more about that and then be able to teach people. It is so easy to be either dominant or to be submissive. But to truly partner is such a hard thing. The kind of dance that you have to learn to dance to truly partner is very, very hard. And I would want my, my grandchildren to know how to partner, to learn how to partner good. When they partner, then something wonderful occurs because um, they see the uh, interdependence and the, um, the way in which they complement one another. You know, uh, there are some things I'm good at, some things Eve is good at. When you, uh, you can, if you want to argue about it, you can have fights. But if you also want to say, Oh, this is so wonderful. I can't handle that so well as you can. I will handle something else that I can handle better. So that the partnering is, is what's, what's at issue. I'd like by that time that there should be a situation where huh, when the kids go through puberty, that there should be a sex education that will not only teach them the no-nos, but also the yes-yes, you know that there should be people at least, you know, um, I would like for my grandchildren to have a soft porn movie to show them how people who really love one another get it on. You know, if, if uh, right now there's no, no such a thing that, where are they going to learn? What they learn on the street, you know, what they learn in those difficult circumstances that can poison a whole lifetime. And when people learn how to give each other pleasure in the sight of God. It's so wonderful. I used to have some people come from out of town uh, to Winnipeg because they didn't have a mikveh in their town. It was in North Dakota. And so they would come and I had a, the room where they would stay after she'd gone to mikveh. It would be a room where I had a big picture of the Rebbe hanging. One morning after they had gone off, I come down to that room, you know, and they had stripped the bed and all that stuff to get it in the laundry. And I look, and the picture of the Rebbe is turned to the wall. <laughs> so later on, when I saw them, I asked what was going on. They couldn't do it with the Rebbe watching. <laughs> you know? Uh, I, I would like to be able to have my grandchildren be able to do it with the Rebbe watching, with, the, with God watching, with, you know, with... Picture with, of Zayda on the wall. Huh? <laughs> well, you know what? Uh, it's a wonderful thing when people talk about idolatry. <laughs> and there are some things that the Tibetans have that I'm sure if you want to go strict and say it's idols, idols, idols. There's a stupa up in the mountains uh, in, um, in uh, Colorado. And uh, so they, they gave me the, 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 the permission, the privilege to go up there. First, there is this immense Buddha, and you can sit in such a way that his eyes focus on you, you know, the, the statue. And it's amazing to sit there in front. Then you go in, you have to know the combination to the door to go in. And on the way up, there are those, <laughs> you know, those, those 
uh, Tibetan scary uh, wrathful deities. That, that, that's scary. Then you go to the next floor and you come up there and there is a guy with a blue body penetrating a woman in a red body. His eyes with trained on her with such fervor, ecstasy, you know, intensity. And she, with her tongue between her teeth, smiling at him and teasing him at the same time, while one leg of hers is around him. And they're standing up in this way. I come in, my first sense was, excuse me, <laughs> and I walk out, you know, <laughs> because, but then when I, when I go back and I see the way the rabbis have talked about the Kruvim, you know, how the Kruvim, like male and female, were in union with one another when Israel and God were in harmony. So I come up there and I, and I see how, how they depict this. So while I'm not going to go and make that, those images in my shul, you know, but at least in here, when I say, L'shem yichud kutshev richo shchinte, this is for the union of the Holy One and the Shechina. And when the Zohar depicts the union of the lover and the beloved, and the Shir Hashirim sings about that, I would like for my grandchildren, great-grandchildren, to be able to have the holiest thing happen for them in, in sex. So they, they could replenish each other with energy and with love and accept each other. You know, when the, when the, the Kabbalists start to use this imagery, they abstracted it later on. First they were talking about the female fluid, the male fluid, but then they called it with fancy Aramaic names so that people should forget what this is really about. The Baal Shem Tov put in a saying, why is it that Mashiach is late in coming? because they don't spend enough time in the mystery of kisses at the great love before the union. Well, you know, uh, it's a statement uh, that's quoted by Reb uh, Yaakov Yosef of Polnoy in one of his books of the Baal Shem. So you get the sense that I want that to heal. I think when that heals, a lot of stuff will heal in the planet, you know, because we will have a deeper respect for our togethering, okay? What else would I like to see? <laughs> I remember uh, somebody once said, when she runs for God, you know, <laughs> she'll make it so that all the things you like to eat, you won't get fat. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I would like to see uh, something that, that um, we would get so um, attracted by the food that we really need and repelled by the food that we don't really need and we'll have that together in that time. When that happens, I wouldn't mind coming back oh, again. Man, I wouldn't mind having you today. <laughs> All right.